Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Savelle. Welcome to Back to the Basics. Such a privilege to have you join with us today. And let's pray before we get into our lesson. Father, I thank you for everybody that's watching our broadcast today. Thank you for hearing ears. Thank you for receptive hearts. And I believe as they listen to what I have to share with them, that it's going to take their faith to another level. And I believe, according to your word, that our faith overcomes the world. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you can say amen, say amen. Praise God. We've been talking about the four most important principles that I have learned over the years that have caused and produced a winning lifestyle. And God wants you to be a winner. Amen. He wants you to be a winner in every area of your life. So we've been talking about these over the last several Back to Basics programs, and we're going to continue talking about it today. But let's rehearse just a little bit. So we said that number one is having a revelation or knowing that God created you to be a winner. Say that with me. God created me to be a winner. That is a fact. It's Bible. You were not created to be a loser. You were not created to win a few, lose a few. You were created to win in every area of your life. So we talked about that in great detail. And then number two, we talked about that we are to never allow negative circumstances to prevent us from pursuing our dream. If God gave you that dream, if God created that goal on the inside of you, then it's worth fighting for. Don't give up on it. You know, so many people, when negative circumstances come their way, they tend to just give up. They say, well, it must not have been God. I've heard people say, well, if it was God, it would be easy. Not necessarily. If it's God, then usually I have discovered I have to fight for it. Paul said, having fought the good fight of faith and instructs us to fight the good fight of faith. So if it's truly from God, then you're going to have to take your faith and push through and pursue and just keep going forward no matter what the devil says, no matter what anybody else says. If you believe it's God, then just keep pursuing it and God will make it happen. I've been serving the Lord now for 53 years, coming up 53 years, and I have this testimony. He has been faithful and he's never let me down. Now, I can't say that it's always been easy. No, it hasn't always been easy. But the beautiful thing is, if I stuck, stuck with it, and I have, then God made it happen. And that's what I remember the most. Not, not the hard part. It was once it came to pass, you know, you tend to just forget how hard it was, but you just begin to rejoice and thank God for His faithfulness, and then go on to the next faith endeavor. And if you'll continue to pursue your dream, no matter how much adversity you experience, then God will make it happen for you. So let me ask you this. Do you have a dream? Do you believe it's from God? Have you got goals? Do you believe the Holy Spirit inspired them? Then fight for them. Don't give up. I remember the Lord saying to me many years ago in a supernatural visitation, I was in Liberty, Texas, and I didn't know it was going to happen, but I had a supernatural visitation of the Lord, and He said these words. He said, my people know me as Savior. Some of them know me as baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Some know me as healer, and some know me as deliverer. He said, but they don't all know me as the God of the breakthrough. Then he said this, if they did, then they wouldn't be so quick to give up. So don't give up. The God of the breakthrough, he told me to tell you this. I, when, when In that visitation, he told me to tell people all over the world, the God of the breakthrough wants to visit your house. And when he visits your house, then praise God, he will cause your dreams and your goals to be fulfilled. So say it with me once again. Number one, I was created to be a winner. Number two, I refuse to allow negative circumstances to prevent me from pursuing my dreams. Then today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects in the Bible. And if you know anything about my ministry and you know anything about my life, then you know what's coming. One of the greatest revelations I've ever received from the Lord is this. I have the favor of God on my life, and so do you. And when you know that you have God's favor on your life, then it makes no difference what's happening around you. 
The favor of God can open doors that no man can shut. The favor of God can change rules and regulations and policies if necessary so that you can can win in whatever pursuit you you are endeavoring to accomplish. If the favor of God is on your life, then praise God, you've got an advantage. Now, let's study this, and we're going to talk about it on today's program, and then we're going to continue talking about it on our next Back to the Basics. If you have your Bibles with you, let's open them first of all to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, and here we find when God first introduced Himself to a man named Abram, whom you know later He changed His name to Abraham. Now listen to what God said to him. In verse 1 it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. Now, underline that phrase if you haven't done so well already. I will bless thee. What does the word bless mean? It means empower to prosper. It means to cause to excel. It means to uh, give you the ability to experience increase and to multiply. You know, when you have the blessing of God on your life, then praise God, you have an advantage over people that don't know these things and people that have never surrendered their life to Christ. You have the blessing of God on your life. And here's the beautiful thing about it. You say, wait a minute, you're talking about Abraham. Yeah, but we're going to go to Galatians chapter 3, and I'll prove to you that that same blessing that was on Abraham is now on you, and it's on me. And I depend on it every day of my life. But here's what I want to say. Not only did God say to him, I will bless thee, but in the Amplified Bible it says, and I will give you an abundant increase of favors. Say that with me. God blessed him, and God gave him an abundant increase of favor. Now remember that, because that's part of the promise of God for you as well. Now notice once again as we continue reading this in verse 2, I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee, and make thy name great. Notice what he says. Because of the blessing of God on your life and the favor of God on your life, then your name will become distinguished. It will be known. Why? Because there will be manifestations in your life of that blessing working and the favor of God working. And eventually people are going to ask you, how are you doing this? Where are you getting all this? And you'll be able to say, it's the blessing of God and it's the favor of God on my life. And now you're going to be known for those reasons, the favor of God and the blessing of God. In fact, you know, when I first came to the Lord back in 1969, some of my relatives thought I'd lost my mind. They thought, you know, he's become a fanatic. He, he's become one of them religious characters. Now, I didn't become religious. Uh, I, I, I met God. I, I was introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ, got filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to understand that His Word could make a winner out of me. No, I didn't become religious. I just found out what belonged to me in Christ, what I could do in Christ, and, and uh, how I could live as a result of receiving Christ in my life. And then eventually, you know, they considered me a nut. Oh, the nut. That Jerry has become a nut. He's become a fanatic. But they couldn't help notice that the blessings of God and the favor of God was on my life. And then what happened? Well, once they were in trouble, which usually was a lot, when they were in trouble, what did they do? Uh, they thought of the nut. He's a nut, but God's blessed him. He's a nut, but it seems like the favor of God's on him. See, your name becomes distinguished. That's what God promised Abraham. I will bless you. I will give you an abundant increase of favor, and I'll make your name known. I'll cause your name to become distinguished. In other words, you're going to be known when people see the blessing of God and the favor of God manifesting in your life then they're going to remember your name because from time to time, they're going to be calling on you to pray over them and ask you to help them experience what you're experiencing. Now, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And let's remember what the Apostle Paul said. Let's read it if you have your Bibles with you in verse 13. 
Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree. That, in other words, it, He did this in order that something would take place in our lives, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles or non-believers through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So notice, when Jesus redeemed mankind, God says that if they will receive my son and what he did for them at Calvary, then the blessing of Abraham will come on them. Notice, it's the same blessing that God put on Abraham that we just read about in Genesis chapter 12. And right along with the blessing came favor. They're inseparable. You can't have the blessing without having favor. You can't have favor without having the blessing. They, were, they, they are divinely linked together. And then notice it says in verse 29, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Say this with me. I am Abraham's seed. Therefore, I am an heir according to the promise. So what is the Bible telling us? That the same blessing and the same favor that was on Abraham's life is now on our life. Now go back and study the life of Abraham and you'll see how that blessing caused him to prosper. You'll see how the favor of God caused him to win battles that in the natural he didn't have the ability or the know-how or the expertise to do so, but the favor of God made it happen. Study the life of Abraham and you'll see once again how the blessing completely changed his life. In fact, in Genesis 12, God said, once again, I will bless you, give you an abundant increase of favor. You go to chapter 13, one chapter later, and it says, and, and God caused Abraham to prosper, and God caused Abraham to excel and increase in, in, in every area of his life. That's what the blessing of God is designed to do, and that's what the favor of God can do. So get it into your spirit. Do it right now. No for a fact. This is a revelation that will make a winner out of you, that you have the blessing of God and you have the favor of God. And with those two powerful forces, praise God, your losing days will soon be over. Amen. Praise God. Join with me again next time on Back to the Basic. We're going to continue talking about this. It's so powerful and you don't want to miss it. So I look forward to sharing with you then. Until then, Remember, your faith will overcome the world.